everything. Uh, it's been nothing short of awesome, uh, the opportunity to be here, the experience for me. And I uh, just hope you walk away with something uh, from the clinic, uh, each, each uh, speech that we give. Um, I'm going to be talking about the power read and the zone read, tie in some play actions. We might have a little fun, a couple of trick plays at the end uh, that we ran this last season. Uh, it's always nice to have a few of those uh, ready to go in your back pocket. I'm going to flip to the slide from yesterday, just so you can see that my e what my email address is there on the bottom. Uh, make sure you get the number one in there after my initial and last name, and then it's at emich.edu. Feel free to email me anytime. I'll uh, you know, give you some answers. I'll give you. Feel, I'll be uh, happy to share the slides with you that I show up on the board, up on the screen. Um, it's hard to exchange video and so forth. I'd like to keep that in house. It's kind of our philosophy, but um, uh, just to be happy to share with anything with it with the. Uh, with the email address there. So, <clears throat> get power read and zone read uh, today. Um, I'm not going to talk about the philosophy too much because we did that yesterday. But I think the things that uh, to keep in mind is that you need to have an attitude uh, in, in creating that, not just installing it and thinking the plays are what's going to make everything work. It's how they run the plays, the attitude, and uh, you know just the physicalness that they uh, they play with. We are an up-tempo, fast-paced offense. I'm going to refer to that quite often, especially in this presentation. I want you to just think about ways of calling plays here and there quickly just to keep the defense on their heels, okay? Um, and uh, just trying to mix up the change of tempo, being able to snap the ball immediately when the official sets it, uh, and then going into your normal uh, tempo or, or huddle, whatever that may be. Um, we use multiple formations. Again, you're going to see that today. Uh, it might be more bunch formations, uh, you know, wide formations. Yesterday, I showed a lot of unbalanced formations. Um, and then personnel starts with that. It's the people that you have running the plays. Get the ball in your in your best player's hands as much as possible. And a lot of what you're going to see today is exactly that. Deception. And when you're talking about the option, it's really important. Uh, we talk about the quarterbacks after they run the zone read and they give it, we tell them to get their hands to the belly and try to carry out the fake. I challenge them to carry it out past the line of scrimmage. Okay, so they're carrying it out, whether it's a zone read or a power read, it doesn't matter. Get your hands to the belly. I'm going to show a couple of clips from the year before where we were very poor at it, and then you can see a lot of clips from this year where we were much better with our fakes. But that's part of the deception, okay? A lot of different reasons, with ways. Yesterday it was fly sweep with a counter, and the deception was the motion. Space, leverage, and then attack. And uh, I'll show you some ways where we run play actions that attack the ball, uh, attack the, the defense vertically. And so just always remind, be mindful of what's your philosophy, okay? What's our base play? For us, these two plays are our base run plays. We run zone, okay? both inside and outside, but we run the zone read. Uh, we ran about 170 times this year, okay, over the course of the season, zone read. We run power, and then we run power read. So for the line, it's very similar blocking schemes, okay? It's not a lot different. There's minor things, you know, that I'll get to with how the guard tracks to a linebacker and so forth with the power read. But for the most part, the block back for the center is the same. The double team with the guard and tackle, the zone combinations are all are all very are all similar. So these are our two base plays. This is where it starts in our run game. Um, we know these schemes very well. First of all, they're great complements to each other. Okay, it places pressure on the D ends from both the front side and the back side, and I'll show you that in a second. If we're running zone read and I have the tailback to my left, okay, we're going to read that left defensive end. Left, at some point, that left defensive end realizes, hey, you know, here's how I play the zone read. Okay? Well, this defensive, defensive end is getting blocked on the zone read. The next play, the tailback's on the same spot, okay? And now we're running the power read, and we're reading the other defensive end. Okay? So now, all of a sudden, that defensive end who had to back away is not getting blocked on the power read when he was getting blocked on the zone read. Then we'll take it to the next level. We'll have the tailback here, okay? And we'll motion, I'll show you the clips of it. We'll motion someone into the backfield, 
and run the power read this way. So that defensive end not only gets zone read rules, but he gets power read, okay, and vice versa. So you can see how they're great complements to each other um, in isolating those defensive ends in particular. And then the man scheme versus the, the zone scheme with the two concepts uh, really complement each other well as all, also. Um, I talked about the motions into the backfield there, right here, um, and then, uh, you know, with the two back sets. Number, and you can see the efficiency we had with this play. Now, that's not a lot of attempts in the power read, and I get that. Um, here's our situation. Our starting quarterback, who is, I mean, lightning in a box, okay? He can score. He, was, he, he can score from anywhere on the field. He was our home run threat, okay? But he got hurt broke his jaw the third quarter of our first game. Okay, third quarter of the first game. So he's out for six weeks, and in the end he ended up coming back, uh, busting up his ankle, just could stay healthy. And so the quarterback you're seeing on most of this film was actually our backup, and he is a much different style quarterback. So some of the numbers changed with the power read, but we ran more fly sweep as what you saw yesterday. So it just changed a little bit of what we do. When we see what we, what we look at, okay, and the key points is who do we want to carry the football? Okay, is your tailback your best player? You saw yesterday, he's a pretty good player for us. So in our offense right now, with our pocket passing quarterback, okay, the healthy quarterback, we want to have our tailbacks run the football. So if the ends in that game are playing up the field, then we're probably gonna run more zone read and let the tailback get the give up inside. If the ends are squeezing and attaching to the hip, okay, so that our tackle goes down, the DN comes down with them, so I call that attaching to the hip, now the power read is great play because if he's sitting there stationary, we're gonna be able to get the tailback outside and to the edge, okay? So is he attached to the hip? Are the DNs up the field? Okay. Are they surfing it? Are they trying to play it slow? I know uh, Coach, uh, Coach Ward talked about the, the, the uh, cut and react uh, technique that he uses. And then attacking the mesh. Are they running right at the mesh where your quarterback and your tailback are trying to execute the handoff? That's probably the hardest one to defend. Okay, But there's other things that we can do. We'll run a, a tight end on a swipe block, a, 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 you know, a, a split flow action. And we'll just kick them out and run underneath them a time or two and, and uh, you know, slow those defensive ends down some. So how do we handle inside and outside pressures? You know, I don't like running power read into a bunch of pressure off the edge because our quarterbacks can end up keeping the football. And again, I want our best players to have the football. So how we handle it, you know, might be different than how you handle it. It isn't that you can't run the play, but I know my quarterbacks can end up with the football. You get 75 snaps a game, and all of a sudden the quarterback's got your first five carries in the, in, the, in the first quarter of the game. That's not the direction we want to be going. Okay, so, you know, we'll talk about it when we see some clips here in a second. Um, okay, here we go. Power read. First of all, uh, for us, you know, I just drew up a two by two formation. Um, the, the, the backside tackle versus the fifth, versus uh, either it's, it's a secure B gap. And hinge, the same rule I had yesterday on the back side of our fly sweep, if you remember that. The back side of our counter, the back side of our power. Okay, so very easy. He's securing the back side, B gap, making sure the center can block back on the nose or the three technique. And then he's just hinging back, making sure the end doesn't catch us from the back side. Our left guard in this case, if we're running the power read to the right, he is going to skip pull. Same technique we talked about yesterday. If he's pulling right, he's going to step back with his opposite foot to keep his shoulder square and be able to get his eyes on his target. Now the key difference here when we run power read is we don't want the guard to chase a linebacker who started in the box and is running out of the box. Okay? We will have other players accounting for that here in a second. Okay, so he's going to skip pull, and he's going to—he's got the inside backer, but more than anything, he is going to run a track. He's going to run uh, a rail, whatever you know, whatever you call it in your in your offense, in your terminology. Our center's going to back block just like a power and counter scheme. 
Our, our guard tack, we're going to execute their uh, gap responsibilities. If there's an un uncovered gap, then our guard is going to step, you know, in this picture right here, the right guard would step with his left foot with backside hand presence for the tackle to be able to come in and get a good double team, okay? We don't, we want to get movement. Yes, everyone loves to get vertical movement. We're good with getting horizontal movement as well because somehow we got to open up a seam here if the quarterback keeps the football, okay? So our tackle's down and they're gonna double to a, the first backer backside of, of the midline. So if the center's right here, they're gonna block to the mic in this case because he's on the opposite side of the formation. Our receiver's on the front side and I wanna start outside in. If you were here yesterday for our fly sweep, you remember that our number one receiver would block the outside number, okay, of the number one defender coming outside in, the outside number. So he's gonna get into a breakdown position, he's gonna post that outside arm, okay, he's gonna work that outside number, he's trying to get the edge, or he's trying to get the stretch. He's trying to get us out here. We're trying to open up this. The corner wrong arms it, he's the force player, okay, so when he, when he uh, not wrong, wrong arms it, when he fights the pressure, Okay, and he starts running to the sideline. Now we're just going to switch the, the, the pressure from our end and drive him out of bounds and create a bigger lane up inside. Number two, just like yesterday when we were on the fly sweep, he attacks the outside shoulder tip. Okay, he's trying to get us out here as well. All right, that's their goal. And when we get number three, it would be the same rule when we get a third receiver. So that's the rules for, for the guys blocking up front. The back side's going to cut off. Okay, any backside pursuit, and then the quarterback, this, he's going to put his toes at five. Uh, in our guns uh, alignment, we're toes at five, and it's what we do on power read is we're going to take a slight depth step, okay, just a little bit of depth, a little bit of a drop, not much. I mean, we're talking inches, okay? So we're here, a little bit of the depth step to allow the tailback, who we want no more than even with the quarterback. I don't want him in front of the quarterback because now, Defenses know that we're not running a zone scheme, we're running some type of outside run track, okay, with the running back. So, he is either even, or preferably, his toes are on the heel of the quarterback. And when he runs his lane, he's just like this. And he, we give him just a little bit of room, his upfield shoulder should be five yards right where the quarterback's toes are coming. So the upfield shoulder should come right here. So you can't hand it off like this. So our quarterback just gets a little bit of depth. By his second shuffle, he needs to have decided whether he's gonna hand it off or keep it based on the defensive end's reaction to our option. The end comes up the field, the quarterback's keeping it underneath. The end comes down or sits, okay? If he squats, we're around it right now because he's sitting still and our running back is faster in the first place than him and on, full, and on a full speed sprint, He's going to get the edge. Just like with the uh, fly sweep yesterday, we tell our running back to run the 200. Like you're running a two, the curve of a 200-yard dash, okay, in track. So he's going to try to get out to the edge, and then at some point, he's just going to curve and get upfield once the whole thing gets stretched out. We do not want him running and then all of a sudden thinking he just needs to get upfield because he saw a little, bit of a, a little bit of a seat. Get that thing stretched, okay? Stay on your course. Try to get outside and then turn it up when you get the whole defense going. All right, we'll see some clips here. The first clip I'm going to show you is out of a three by one. I love running this play and introducing it to a three man or three receiver surface. Okay, and what I mean by that is we got one, two, three. Now I'll find a lot of different ways to get three receivers to that side. You can do it out of a two by two very easily. Okay, but when you start getting into 3 4 defenses, 4 4, 4 4, you're going to be good. But 3 4 defenses, uh, you'll want to try to steal a third, uh, third blocker one way or another. Okay, so number one's on number one defender. Number two is blocking outside shoulder tip. Number three is blocking outside shoulder tip. You'll notice we have two, two uh, players accounting for the inside linebacker. He's blocking for the give to the tailback. The guard is pulling for the keep, for the ruck, for the quarterback, okay? So we have two players when we have a three-by-one surface, usually accounting for one defender, okay? 
So everything applies here. We're trying to get the ball out here. It's going to be hard to get out here, but that's with our blocking scheme, the intent, and then you'll see it turn up here, such as this clip uh, that we're watching right off the bat. So one's going to block one, two's going to block two, three's going to block three. If we're getting too high, this play is golden, okay? It's going to be a great play for it. You're reading the defensive end. We're going to double back. We honestly don't have to double back for Mike because he's head up on the center, okay? So here's the play. See, shoulder tip, shoulder tip. We got beat here very quickly, don't like it, okay? But now we're gonna drive them out. That's where he's gonna go. I don't like giving it up that quickly, but let's drive them out, okay? So we got two tight ends here, flex out a receiver. Watching the end zone shot, you'll see, okay, this double team ended up coming off to here, and you'll see it they didn't do a very good job. I would much rather see this double team push him all the way here, okay? Let this guard, run his track to the Mike linebacker who's, who's moving with the flow, okay? And you can see this is a defensive end that's trying to attack the mesh point with, between our quarterback and tailback. This is probably one of the harder looks you're gonna get at, okay? But there we go. Now we're around the edge, we're trying to stretch the edge, okay? And then once we get the seam, run the 200 and uh, get vertical. Okay, so if you have questions, I go through them. I got a ton of clips. I think mean, I'm a visual learner, and so I like to see what other people are doing, so I'm gonna run through a million clips here for you. Okay, one on one, two on two, three on three. We got a two high, it's gonna be a great play. It's gonna be a great play. We're playing against a 3-3 stack defense. This is Army right here. Okay, quarterback takes a little bit of a depth step with his right foot. Tight tailback running the 200. Okay, we lost our outside leverage. That's all right, we'll get downhill. Tailback's gonna have to beat the safety. End zone shot, you can see the tackle against a 3 3 stack. He has no one in the B gap. So he's gonna have a free shot. In a 3 3 look, he's going to the mic. That's different than a four down front. Four down front, he would go down here. Three down front, he's gonna go there. Got it? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's easier running to a shade, to a one technique. You're no doubt. It is easier because there's no one to double. The guard just down blocks on it. So we talk through that, but it's not something, we've run this place so much uh, that now we just feel like we're good at the double team up to the back and we call it a deuce it block. So you're right though. If you get a shade or a one technique to that side, it's a much easier play, especially if you're just getting into it. You might have to run into the boundary a lot, um, you know, which I can show you here in a second, too. Okay, here we are at LSU. So we got one-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-three. Two, three on three. There's the free player right there, okay? We got to beat him with the tailback. We checked it. We liked the play. Okay, now I think we're running to a three here. Tight DN comes down. Tailback runs to 200. We're trying to hit it out here. Okay, you can see now he makes the cut. I like what he did there. He gets this thing. Look at the safety. The safety was angling out here. Boom. Now we stick our foot to the ground. We get vertical. And we got a nice game. against a very good defense. There's our three technique front side. We need to hammer the heck out of this guy. I don't even care if we don't get to him. Because our guard pulling should be able to track. You see how he's running a track? not just going to the front side, inside backer. He's not just going to this backer. He is coming tight off, see how tight he is coming off the top of his down block? He needs to run that track. Now, if the tackle would have stayed on, we'd have had a really nice scene for the quarterback to keep it if he had to keep it. Okay, question, yeah. prefer to run to three? It's just a matter of how, how well you can handle this. Okay, this is, you know, we're now showing you to the shade against these guys, it's gonna be a lot better play. The left side, the guard is gonna step with his inside foot, hopefully he does on film. Okay, he's gonna get a backhand presence, the tackle is gonna come down. See, the tackle is stuck. The tackle. Oh. Yeah, then he, he's gonna go work through this all the way to there, the right tackle. And the left guard is going to aim off the, off the tackle's down block and don't chase him. If he runs out of the box, don't chase him. Run your track. What do you teach your left tackle if you're on the free 
Yeah, he's gonna. He's the, he's the guy. He's got to come down through there. He's got to. He's got to take care of business. See, he's wrong on this. He's got to stay on it because the guard, the guard's stuck. You know, let's just keep moving this three technique all the way over here. We got him running. Okay. Now when we come off, we got two guys going to the inside back. Okay. So just stay on. Just keep that double team moving. Take care of the first level first. And then let, make, make those guys at the second level have to make the play while they're running laterally, trying to figure out who has the football, you know, and we have a guard pulling up to him. Is there a question back? Yeah. yeah. Um, you could play a, a free five or something. Um, then you have, you don't have an end, so you have a, a four eye, I guess. Yeah, right here. Yeah. This you clip still, right here. Yeah, so you're going to get three five. You're still reading the end. Yeah, good question. We're reading the C gap defender. Okay, we read the C gap defender. So, in this case, we identified him. See the see the initial. Okay, we're thinking he's gonna be the C gap defender, and he was. Okay, now there's a rule. Okay, if if you if your read disappears as the quarterback, and if your read right here, he's the C gap defender. If your read disappears, okay, you're gonna have to keep the football. All right. Now, as you run this play so much. Your quarterback will recognize the read disappeared, and there is no one out here, okay? Because there's different coverages and different things. All of a sudden, you just hit it right. You can still give it, but your quarterback, it's like the 200 and 300 level, you know, part of the class. I mean, it's just, it's just after experience, you get a feel for it. So he can give it and make a great play, especially if you got a quarterback that you don't want to have the ball all the time. So the read disappears. You, you got the, the rule on paper is to keep it, okay? All right, let's go to the next clip here. Okay, again, uh, now here's a key. All right, here's the key. Okay, now I don't like the look for the give as much here. One on one, two on two. We already got a safety rolled down. If you notice, it's fourth and two. We're going for it. We're saying he can get two yards no matter what, or a quarterback can get two yards no matter what, no matter who, who's forced to have the football. Okay, so we're saying one, two, three. That means that this linebacker on a give is unblocked for the give. Okay, and he can scrape over the top. So if we give it, okay, he can scrape. Now, the thing about this is, again, when you block down, in this case, if we'd have given it, if it had been a give read, we already got him out leverage because his initial fit is, is uh, downhill, okay? But the end forced a keep read, according to the quarterback. He kept it downhill, got a nice play. Okay, so it was fourth and two. There's our shame that we like running to, right? Because now our guard can down block. Our tackle, I don't like how he lunged. He could have just given a good hard hand. I mean, these guys were playing aggressive and playing some good football. Wanted to beat some people up. Uh, technique, he lost his technique right there. He should have been to that backer right there. Okay? And then we're reading here, and our guard's turning up to there. Our guard had to kick the mic out because our tackle overran it. But you can see, I mean, there's the lane. So the quarterback takes two shuffles. He reads it. He's downhill. The last thing I tell our quarterbacks is, most of the time you think tuck the ball in your outside arm, right? Well, the guy that's unblocked is actually outside of you, and so we actually tuck it in our inside arm because I had too many times where that defensive end would force him to keep by the quarterback, and he'd just throw his hand out there, and he'd knock it loose, okay? And, and most of the time it's in practice. And so... Uh, early on when I first started running this play, I just realized, hey, we're going to keep the ball on our inside arm, even if there are some defenders here, but there's a lot more defenders to the outside, uh, so we're going to tuck it in our inside arm on this play. Okay, so now here's the next thing. Here's what I like to do. How can we get a three-man surface? One, two, three. Now we're going to steal the tailback. Very similar to what we did in the fly sweep yesterday. We're going to motion in. We're going to run fly, we can do it with the receiver, or we can do it with the running back. Two years ago, we ran with the receiver, so I'll show you those clips. This last year, we did it more with the running back, and so we motion in the backfield and settle them down. Okay, so we're, we're coming here. So the same rules apply as we did in the fly sleep. One-on-one, two-on-two. If he comes, we'll work to the safety. 
Tail back's going to make everyone right. Tail back's looking outside, adjusting in. So the tail back's looking outside, adjusting in. Okay? And then we got a nice seat. Now, it takes some timing if you want to commit to running this as a fly sweep. It takes some work. I, we went to, because we felt like we, our mesh wasn't as clean as we wanted it to be, we went to motioning him in and settling him. And I'll show you those clips here in a second. But, you know, we did, we had some success, as you can see, it's against Florida, okay, where we, uh, where we hit the fly sweep. Here's another one, run the fly sweep, okay, one on one, two on two, he's looking outside in, okay, outside's good, taking care of the, the linebacker, the making the safety, make a tackle, just like it was, but it was a three by one play. Quarterback's three, the defensive end, now you see how fast the read is though for the quarterback? Now it's good and bad because it's fast for the defensive end also. So we can hand the ball off. But if that defensive end puts us in a bind, it's going to be a tough read because it's happening so fast. So I'll show you the alternative which we did. I think the next, yeah, the next play, this is how we run it a lot this fall, this last fall. We didn't run it with the fast fly speed sweep motion. I love this formation and running the play I'm going to show you into the boundary with speed, with tempo, okay? So this is one of our jet series plays uh, that we're gonna have uh, for this fall, okay? So it might be jet five, jet five, whatever you wanna make it. It might be a one word that you say, um, you know, uh, read right or whatever it might be. I mean, you can call it whatever you want. So you can see, we're quick getting lined up. They're, they're still moving around. It's a crack scheme now. In the boundary, our splits are tighter, so we got good angles. Crack, crack, tail back to the corner. Okay, so some of this probably makes sense, especially after seeing uh, the, the, the topic I talked on yesterday. Okay, another one of the tougher mesh reads that, that we had. You see the defensive end tried to attack the mesh point between the quarterback and the tailback. Okay, that was one of the tougher ones. You can see how he played it right there. But we got a crack. Crack, tailback on the edge. And again, you know, I would much rather, if you watch all these clips and the number of times we could have just stayed on the three technique, and on paper, it's to go to this defender, the backside linebacker, but in, 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 in that, that's in theory, but in reality, every time we run this play, the guard can actually take care of him. I mean, every clip we've seen, that could, be, that could have been what we do. So I would much rather, again, have us stay on this three technique and drive him all the way to this official. 20 yards down the field, pull the guard here. He's blocking for the give. That's our receiver cracking. And now we got a nice play down the sideline. So I'll show you a bunch of clips, different looks. Crack, crack. <laughs> Tailback's here. And again, just like yesterday, the tailback's going to make everyone right. Defensive end surfs. Uh, they don't want to get extra hats into the boundary. This is one of those full philosophy things. Uh, you know, let's make them have to defend the entire field, the field and the boundary. Okay. Defensive end squeeze, attach the hip to give. Don't like the tailback. He should have ran the 200 and tried to keep it outside more. He thought he saw a seam. He flinched. Here's a better look at it. Okay. Now they're getting extra hats down here, but we're still cracking. And on paper, we're going here. I think that's where the receiver is actually trying to go. The corner just got in the way. So it just blocks someone and let the tailback make you right. Okay, let the tailback make you right. And just go cause chaos out there. See, here's, here's nice because we're getting that A gap, that, that one technique, or really more of a two high. So the tackle can climb to the second level much easier, okay, versus going against the three. Yep. Um, wouldn't it be easier if you have a one technique so the tackle climbs directly on the linebacker? Absolutely. Uh, I think he just wanted to help um, one technique. Yeah, he's got to secure this gap. Okay. So he's helping a little bit, but you're exactly right. It makes it much easier to get to the next level, to get to the linebacker when we have a one or a two eye on the side that we're running the power to. You're exactly right. So if you're getting over front to the field, you know, running the boundary makes a lot of sense. And you see, we attack people, I mean, this is just some of the clips. We had maybe one play that went for 
less than two or three yards running this play into the boundary. Our guys understood, though, that when we lined up into the boundary with this play, to hurry up and line up because the defense doesn't like they, they don't think it's for real. They're like, man, they got the formation of the boundary now after I mean, this is the eighth or ninth game of the season, okay? And they're still not, want, not wanting to commit, even with all the tendencies that we have. It's a good, <laughs> solid game for us. Now, the crack scheme. Here's the crack scheme to the field. So we need to get our splits condensed somehow, so I motioned the number one receiver down inside the number two. Now I got good angles on the crack. It would not be good angles to crack from here all the way down to here and here to there, right? I mean, it's going to get stretched to the sideline. They'll run underneath of the crack block. So let's find a way to condense the formation without having to call it. So let's motion, okay? We got great angles, great fits. Tailback's going to make everyone right. Now we got all that space to run to. Okay, so it, it forces you know those safeties as they're fit with those cracks. I mean, that gets tough. Look at this safety right here. Okay, he's supposed to roll to the middle of the field. Okay, he's supposed to roll. Oh, excuse me, is he maybe man? Okay, coming down here with this uh, with receiver, this is a great man uh, way for us to block with uh, man because he's got to make sure the ball's run first, and now he's the only guy left that's unblocked. So it's a good, good little concept for us. So again, just showing you a lot of the variations of our power read. Here's the same blocking scheme on the front side. And all we did was motion out of a two by two stack look into the backfield, okay? So we can run power read to the left with the tailback. We can run zone read to the left of the tailback. Now we can run power read to the right by motioning the slot receiver in from the left hand side. Okay, so here's an example. We can run this way with the tailback. We can run zone. We can throw out of this, and now we can motion into the backfield with our, with our uh, other tailback, settle them down, okay, and run a crack, crack scheme. Now, this tight end right here in the slot, he is cracking here. But you notice our outside receiver, okay, he was going there too, and once he saw the tight end had it, he just climbed to the next level. You see that? He made sure the tight end got it, and then he just climbed to the next level. So the tight end made a decision. He didn't want to come all the way down here to Mike on the other half of the other side of the formation. It was an easy give, run the 200 as a tailback, find a seam. Okay, again, run it to the 2i, makes it easy for the tackle to climb, the, to the ends, you know, the ends uh, attached to the hip. We have all this space to run. We're not blocking one of their best players. We're not even blocking him. We're getting great gains. Guys going to the NFL, we're going to have to block him. Okay, here we are, great red zone, man to man, like I said. These, these crack schemes here are good. Crack, crack, tailback here. Now your tailback, the, the, the ball carrier has to beat the safety. Okay, he's got to beat the safety. So it's a good, good scheme for us. Again, we're getting our best players in football in all of these plays. Okay, with the power read, I showed this clip yesterday with the uh, fly sweep just the play action off of it, because I want to show you something that you can do uh, with every run play. Watch how we're running the same blocking scheme to the left. We motion our tail, we motion the receiver in, out of empty to the backfield. You see it's the same blocking scheme up front. The only difference is your tackle, he has pass protection responsibilities on that defensive end. So he can't just come down here and stand in the three technique. He's got to make sure that this defensive end on the right doesn't have a free shot to the quarterback. But the receiver's rules here, he's running an, uh, an out, a an four-step out that can convert to a fade versus a corner that's either, either pressed or squatting in the flat. Okay, so he'll uh, convert it to a fade. The number two, in this case, the tight end. Okay, we're putting this defender right here in conflict. This defender thinks that we're running the power read out here to the boundary. We're putting, so he's, he's working over the top. He, you know, he's been told all week long, don't let this thing, don't get sealed off. Don't let them get to your outfield shoulder, okay? So we make it look like we're going there. We put him in conflict. We got him in an open middle coverage. And now because of the action with the offensive line and the mesh with the quarterback, we got a nice little area to pop, uh, we call it a little pop ender to the, uh, to the tight end. 
The bubble go on the back side, holds the safety in the corner, and we hope to hold the little linebacker a little bit more than we even did right there. So it's a good, good protection for us, uh, especially because of the action it provides. Center's back blocking, guard's pulling, and now instead of turning up to a backer, he's kicking out, tailback's off the edge in case you get a corner blitz. If you get a corner blitz, he's got the edge. Here's another look, just different. I mean, we, we ran power with this quarterback. I mean, people were so nervous of him two years ago. Yep. On the last play action. Yep. Yep. So, you, okay, so the, the, pro, the thing that you got, yeah, it's a good question. So, you're saying this defender right here? Yep, so uh, center's back blocking, tackles down to here. If, if we're getting some type of pressure, the coverage is probably closed, which means that we're going to throw the out route. So the quarterback will work away. He'll feel it. He'll feel it. He'll work away, and then he'll just throw the out route. Okay, because it's probably a closed coverage if they're bringing pressure most of the time, and so it all goes together. But we don't have that defender blocked. If they bring the will from the field, we don't have that defender blocked. You know the, the zone pressures that uh, uh, Coach Iverson was talking about this morning, bringing these two these two backers. Okay, and it's cover three. You get a soft corner. We got to hit the out. Okay, so that's where we tell our quarterback to go to football. So we drill it that way with our quarterbacks. Here's a great play action. Again, I'm showing you one clip of different play actions. Here uh, we ran a lot of, again trying to steal and get a three man surface on power read right. So I haven't shown you the clip, but one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, tailback looking here, possibly getting to the safety. Well, now we run the play action off of it, okay? So we got two backs in the backfield. We show a play action to the left. He jumps up underneath. I love this play. It's a double post to the wheel. So we run and attack the inside hip of the nearest high safety and run a post. We call it an eat him up post. Eat him up, okay? We eat him up and then go win. <coughs> Then we got a skinny post on the outside, and then we have a wheel of some type, and in this case, it's the running back out of the backfield. So it's inside post, outside post, wheel for the quarterback. Okay, and the action with the offensive line really brings the safety. You can see number 25 right here. I mean, he really flies up in there. Now, when we run a deeper play action like this, I like to keep a tight end in on the back side to help out, you know, that tackle, that center, kind of help out with what you're talking about, you know, all the issues you can have there. Because it isn't just a quick little pop pass like I showed you on the last clip. This is more of a shot down the field. Okay? Show you another clip of it right here. Inside post, outside post, wheel. Once this linebacker come up, came, uh, came up to stop the power read, we had him out leverage. We got him beat. We got him beat. He can't stop both. Okay? Quarterback steps up, inside post, outside post, wheel. Okay? Action right here. Again, keeping the tight end. Extra help in case we get a corner blitz. Okay? Eyes for the tight end. Should be out here. Okay, we ride it. Ride it, no more than two shuffles. Okay, usually it's about one and then a quick one. Okay, hit the wheel down the sideline. So the great play action for us. That was our most explosive play two years ago was the power rate. Okay? Or the, the double post of the wheel. We hit it, I think, six or seven times. So with the zone read, okay, with the zone read. I'm showing you a two tight end set right here, just so you can see what we would do. You know, if we're getting an odd front here, um, or even if we got an even, we would arc our tight end to the overhang, okay, against the four down. But on the back side, we'll also arc our tight, arc our tight end. So really, you're blocking with five defender, five uh, linemen on their five, leaving the defensive end. Okay. So we show it to this to our guys in the playbook this way. Uh, when we run our zone scheme, we have combo blocks. So anything that's a center and a guard would be an ace or meeting one. Okay. And so that's our, our first group of, of blocks. If it's guard and tackle, we call that a deuce. And so that's two. Okay. It means number two. And then a, a, end and a tight end and a tackle together would be a tray block. 
So ace, deuce, tray are the blocking schemes. And uh, once our center calls ace, okay, we know if we call ace on the front side, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be certain calls throughout the entire front. Okay? We call ace, it's going to be a slip on the back side and a base or a tray on the front side. I'm not going to get into all the calls, but I want to show you the concepts and the, and the formations more than anything. If the center's working with the backside guard, he calls scoop. If he were, if, if, uh, so either the, the center's going to be calling an ace or he's going to be calling a scoop. Because he's either working with the front side guard or the back side guard. Ace or scoop. Okay? If we call it a scoop, then the tackle on the back side is going to know, okay, there, there's no one probably in the B gap, so I'm going to climb, I'm going to sift through the B gap, okay, and we're going to read the man, the first man outside of me. And I'm going to work for the linebacker. And this tight end on the back side, we do what we call tank. Okay, it's a tank block. So he just goes to the outside defender. Okay, so I'm going to show you some clips. We're not going to focus on the two tight end formation stuff as much, but I, what I want to show you is many of the same formations I just went over. We, the first clips we showed of Power Read was this, right? We showed three by one, spread formation, okay? This call was originally Power Read check to the left, okay? Power Read check to the left. The first clip I showed you was what we called here. Our quarterback did not like the matchup. He, uh, our number three versus 54 because he's off the edge. That was one of our answers to outside pressure. Okay, so it's what he checked to is he checked to a zone read, and you got to figure out what you want to check to. He checked to a zone read, okay, on his own. Now we flip the back. He, he gave uh, probably the tight end here a bubble. Yeah, he gave the tight end here a bubble. We have little hand signals we use to give him a bubble. So if this defender brings pressure, we block one on one, two on two, number three is getting the ball. Okay, we got a zone read, we're reading the C gap defender. Okay, we're giving it, we tell our tailback. Okay, we tell our tailback, and we'll see it right here. We want to try to get him in the B gap, but again, it depends on the splits of the offensive line. His footwork is step, shuffle. Okay, to keep his shoulder square. Now, I've done it the other way, too, where we've actually taken a bucket step, okay, to attack downhill. We aim for the inside leg of the guard when we're in an offset, or we call it sidecar position. When we're in pistol, okay, it would be the same thing. If we run inside zone and we're just handing it off, now we move it out of gap and we aim for the inside leg of the top. But in this situation, he is aiming for the inside leg of the right guard. To press the front side, he's either going to bang it up inside, he's going to bounce it, or he's going to bend it. Okay? So you're going to bang it, bounce it, or bend it. Okay? Those are the three things. But press the heels of the offensive line. Okay? Here's the same call. Here's the same call. We're going power read to the right. Quarterback didn't like this. One on one, two on two, three on three. It looks like he's coming off the edge. You got a safety down. He checked his zone read the other way. Okay, checked his zone read the other way. We know we can zone him up. Check to a bubble over here. We hit the zone. Okay, it's a great check for our quarterback. If you look at this, the thing that made this go, okay, what are these guys trying to do? They're running zone pressure, right? Coach, Coach Ives just went over this. We, we work on this a lot. But you can see the key is, is our guard identified that his linebacker was going backside. So what did he do? He stopped and helped out the tackle, and that was just enough. I mean, this guy's doing a pretty good job. Coach Iverson just talked this morning about how the search guy has to come tight off the backside tackle's butt. Well, the, the guy that made the play go was our right guard. He stopped it right now. He stopped that, that uh, stick, that long stick, by the defensive end, and that got us a nice play. Okay, so um, he didn't want, our quarterback didn't want to throw a bubble. Here's the same call. One on one, two on two, three on three. This guy is unblocked on the power read to the left. He is unblocked right there. So our quarterback checks, see the dummy clap? You can see that, that's what they're doing. Check zone read, okay? Gave him a bubble out here. So now these two have to defend the bubble, okay? They come wide, force a give, hit it underneath to the tailback. So it's a little package play that we carry all season long, okay? We can carry this all season. 
They're get, the read disappeared, so when we run zone read, it's a give. Just like when we call power read, it's a keep for the quarterback, it's a give now when we run zone read, because we're gonna run underneath of this uh, outside pressure. So it's a nice little, nice little check by our quarterback. All right, the next thing I wanna get into with the zone read is our tempo with it. Guys, okay? so I talked yesterday about jet three. I'm just gonna give, you, give it all to you right now. Jet three is our three by one, always three by one with trips to the left. Okay, point man is on, these two are off the ball, okay, and we're running it as fast as we can. This is all we do, is we signal jet three, jet three, that's it. Our guys know, get lined up fast. We started with it into the boundary, we moved it to where we could put the ball to the right hash and still expand our splits, okay, and, uh, and force the defense to have to line up fast. Our quarterback's looking for the throw first. If he likes the screen to the left, take it. Throw it, okay? Make the defense have to run sideline to sideline. If they are rolled and their coverage is giving us the hitch to the, to, to the field, we'll take it to the right, okay? It's just a hitch, fade option. If that's all covered, guess what? Your box numbers are pretty good, okay? They can't stop at all. So right here, one, two, three, and they're flying all over the place. And so we end up just running zone read, hitting a nice seam up inside. Yes, that is gray turf you're seeing. I haven't even talked about that. It's not black and white film, it's gray turf. So, um, but uh, I had a question about that yesterday. It's two years old, the turf, it's the only gray turf in the country. So uh, something special that we did. <laughs> But here, here's, uh, here's Jet 3 again. You guys saw this clip, I think, earlier. Here's Jet 3, okay? The screen's covered. He didn't want to take the, the, the hitch up on top. They got six in the box. We can block five, okay? The tailback's attacking the inside leg of the, near, of, of the front side guard. He's attacking it. And is what happens is you get, you know, you, you gotta look at the tempo part. Look at this left, this deep tackle is trying to make a call. He's trying to tell guys where to fit. And so they're slanting, slanting, someone missed the call. Someone's supposed to be scraping over the top. It's because of our tempo. It's because of how fast we got lined up and how fast we ran, the, ran and executed the play. Here we are. You know, the official's barely getting out away from the line of scrimmage. As soon as they clear the tail line, we can snap the football. They're taking the screen away. They're taking the hitch away. We got about a four and a half man box right there to run the football. Okay, make a safety miss, got a nice play. Okay, I mean they're barely getting lined up. So this would be an ace block right here. Okay, this would be a base, this would be a slit to that backer. So that's how we're blocking it. But everything is with the sun set, front side. If they're moving around, we don't know what to do, we make what we call a game call, and everyone just blocks to an area. Okay, we don't worry about the combo blocks or anything. Now, here's Jet 3. Here's Jet 3. The official is barely getting away from the play. We're snapping it. They can't get lined up right. They've got their back to us. So let's throw it out there. Okay, block your perimeter screen. If you have questions on that, I'd be happy to talk about it. But block your perimeter screen. Number two blocks the most dangerous. And number three runs flat and adjusts. So it's a good little, little scheme for us. I love three by one formations. I'm just gonna fly through some more, uh, some more looks of, of three by one because I love throwing the ball. It's stealing yards on the perimeter. We got guys that are gonna learn how to block on the outside. We got some good players we can put in this spot. And then we're gonna put the pressure to have you know five and six man boxes up inside. Here's our tight end, arc blocking, okay? To the, to the alley, okay? So we're reading 55. Forcing it up inside, okay? So we're acing to 41. We're slipping with this guard and tackle to number five. So what the center did is he got to my screen and he goes, ace L, ace L, which means I'm acing to the left inside backer. So he goes, ace L, ace L. Well, the guys on the other side know it's slip to R, okay? These guys know it's gonna be a slip if it's an ace, just based on fronts, slip to R, which means it's the right inside backer. Slip to, uh, ace to L equals slip to R. It's just, I mean, it's, it's the science to football. 
Okay? There's only so many ways that they can uh, they can line up. You get trips. Now, this is the first play of the game against Florida. I would have been fine throwing the ball out there. They got two defenders. It's pretty much can this guy stop him? Okay? I think more of anything, it was our quarterback felt good about running the football. Uh, we got a six-man box. You'll see him, he can run. He can run. Okay? And there's nine yards right there. So again, it was an ace to R and a slip to L. Alright. Now, one thing, when you talk about who do you want to carry the football, I'm going to show you some examples in two by two of us doing different things with different quarterbacks because we don't want this quarterback to carry it as much. We'll let him throw it. So, for example, when we run with this quarterback, zone read, we got a six-man box. Notice we bubble both receivers. If he likes the leverage and the numbers on the perimeter, he'll throw to either side and just take those easy yards, throw in the bubble screen. We got a six-man box, so now he runs zone read. He's reading this defensive end. Okay, we got good numbers. We can block five, we leave the sixth, and we got a good play. So again, guess what? It's an ace to L, it's a slip to R. I mean, it's the same thing against a four down front. Okay? Let's watch another situation. All right, different quarterback. Different quarterback, a guy that we want to carry the football. Okay? All right? So now, we end up blocking on the edge because we're okay with him carrying it. We block one on one, block two on two. Okay, so if he would have to keep, he would have had the ball out here. It was a give read, get a nice run. So either one of those guys, we are perfectly fine with carrying the football. Okay, so now this is a this is what this would be a scoop. This is why I could pick this clip actually. This is a scoop. The center calls scoop to M because 43 is the mic. Scoop M, scoop M. Well, we know that's now a 3-3 look, or 3-4, and so now it's going to be man, man, and then on the back side, the top is going to sift whenever you have a scoop, okay? So those guys know, I mean, there's about four calls the center can make, and uh, it applies to everyone, okay? So again, we, we are okay with this quarterback keeping the football. So in this situation, we bubble on the front side, and we block on the keep side. So if they... Oh, no, I take that back. We blocked on both sides. Okay? He's blocking for the keep. He's blocking for the keep. You can see where these guys are at. Outside shoulder tip. Outside number. Quarterback keeps it. He's one-on-one -on -one with the safety. We will take that all day long. Okay? With that quarterback. And so it's a matter of you deciding who you want to keep the football, who you want to carry, have the football. So now our, tail, our, our, our center saw that, hey, it's a five-man box. Okay? It's an odd front. So I'm going to scoop and I'm going to push this whole thing over. So he called scoop to R, which means these guys are deuced out to the overhang. He's sifting up to the inside backer, and we're reading the C gap defender. They should be scooping to right there. These two, yep. Okay? And then no one showed up for the guard, so he came back and helped. Quarterback's got the ball in his wrong arm. Okay, we like this. Now here we ran bubble front side. We ran keep. We like this quarterback to keep the ball. It's a different quarterback again. So we're blocking for the keep. Again, I wish we could get to the outside shoulder tip, try to get a chance to get out here. But it is what it is. Okay. Ace to, R, Ace to L, slip to R. Okay, we just saw a clip similar to that. Here we go, man free, man free coverage. Manned up on the outside, one man free. Okay, we're okay with the quarterback keeping it. We wanted to put a bubble to the front side just in case they were running a zone coverage. Apex to the backer. We, got, we run these defenders off because it's man to man. Run them out of there and let the quarterback go one on one versus your free safety. We will take this all day, that matchup right there. Okay. This guy's the fastest guy on the field, I guarantee it, in this play. Okay, we move the back over. Now, guess what? This defensive end, that right here, thought he was on the front side of the zone. We, this is a called deal. Okay, we move him over. Now he's on the back side. Guess what? These guys have different rules now, too, that apply to them when the back's to their side or back's away. 
Every little thing we can do kind of helps, helps us gain an advantage. All right, I want to show you uh, a few, uh, a wrinkle here. How much time do I have left? You know, 10 minutes, 15, 20. All right, all right, I don't know how many, I'm not going to spend much time on this. If you have questions on it, come and ask. But we faced a 3-3 three, three stack team. Two. Huh? Two. Two minutes? All right. Someone doesn't like listening to me. No. All right. All right, so we got a 3-3 three, three stack look. And, and the thing we did, okay, is we, uh, we, want, we uh, blocked the stacks. So we blocked guard center, guard tackle. And then our tackle took the easiest route he could to the little linebacker. This is in one game, okay, what we did against a 3-3 three, three stack to give. Okay, right? We're reading the defensive end, not just the C-gap defender, but the D-end to give. So just watch this, watch this develop. Okay, here's the, here's the, the sack look. So we're blocking center to Mike. We're blocking this sack. The tackle is taking the easiest route. So he blocks out, okay? And now it's a keep. We're gone, we score, okay? Here's a better look. Center guard, guard tackle, tight ends out against a 3-3 or a 3-5. Tackles out to the will. We're reading him, the end comes down. It's a, it's a home run. I'll watch one more clip. Okay, here it is. Here's a, here's a good picture of it. Here's a 3-3 stack, two high safeties, so pretty much we're going to end up with our quarterback versus this safety. Tackle works out to the will for the keep. Got all that room. We'll take that all day. Okay, so great adjustment versus a 3-3 stack. I'm going to go through it fast because I have one other thing I want to show you some clips on here. Okay. We love, again, another way to out-leverage defenses isn't just the bubble, it isn't just the announced screen on the outside, but we call this our mambo screen to the tailback. So if they don't cover and adjust, we're just going to throw it out there all day long. Okay, And I'm going to show you some clips. It's zone for everyone else, but it's a screen where not we're just throwing bubble here, but we're throwing to a, a running back on the run. So. He felt like they bumped and adjust, which they did. Now they're short in the box, okay? And now we run zone read in the corners, the only guy left. I'll show you a few more clips of that. Here's the end zone shot. We got a three, four look, okay? They don't want to pull 45 out of the box. They did though, okay? So now it's three down, and they kind of got almost a three, one, or a four, one box there. Uh, an odd front though, is what they wanted to be in. So we're putting them in a bind. We're putting them in a bind. Here's a better look against the four round cover, which you guys are seeing more of. Okay, we put our running back out here at receiver. It's really the same thing now. We're in split backs. He continues the motion. If they adjust, okay, we got a great six man box. We'll just run the football. It's just zone read. Okay, it's really easy. I'm going to show you stealing some yard. Guess what? Ace to L, slip to R. Okay, I mean, how many times have we said that? Here we go, here it is now. Okay, now they're not bumping. Okay, now they're not really bumping. Quarterback gets it, throws it out there, and let's go block, just like a bubble screen. Except now it's a little bit deeper to a tailback. Okay, there's a little bit of timing with it. We want to catch it about three yards outside the hash when we're on the opposite hash. That's about where, what our timing is when we catch it. Here we are in split backs. Instead of motioning from here, we just start split backs. They're bringing pressure from the field. They got seven men in the box. We can't block seven men with five. Okay, so that means they're short on the outside. One on one, two on two. As long as the quarterback can get rid of the football, which is tight, okay, we're gonna have a good play. Guess what? Outside number, outside shoulder tip. Okay, it's the same thing on every perimeter, perimeter throw and zone blocking up front. Now these last clips are the ones I want to show you. Uh, throw it out here, pump fake, six man pass pro, bluff and go. Bluff and go. So have something off of all these screens that fits what you do. Because we see a lot of yards with those screens, but we better have something off of it after we've shown it all season. This is the 10th or 11th game of the season. We better have something off of it. Pump, Okay, they're both bluffing, 
we read it outside in. We alert to go on the outside, and then we throw it to the slack in the inside. Yeah, score, huh? Come on. Okay, here's another one. Okay? Now we're getting pressure. We slide the protection to the field. Bluff and go, bluff and go. Quarterback alerts the outside. One to two. Okay? And you can always throw it to number three as a check down. Another wrinkle we love, okay, is this one right here. That's the same thing. Um, here's another one. We already showed you this motion where we threw it to the running back, ran his own read, so we better have a complimentary route off of it. Okay? So we motion him around behind. We fake. Look at how far they're triggering. Bluff and post. Real skinny post. Bluff and down the sideline, so we're just switching responsibilities. Okay, they run with the post. Now we just uh, sneak out in behind there. One, two, to three. We ran with a little boot action. Got a big play. You see the quarterback right here. We're running with the boot. We're pulling the guard. Everyone's down. Pulling the guard. Comes around. Get him out of the pocket because it takes a little longer to develop. Nice short throw. It's an easy play. So just some ideas off of. Uh, you know, off of it. Here's the same play. Here's the same play with two backs in the backfield, not one like I just showed you. Okay? Bluff. So skinny post. Bluff and go. Okay? And then don't put air on the ball. Corner can come off and make a play. Don't put air on the ball. But now we're forcing the defense to cover a lot of things. Okay? Alright, I gotta show you, I gotta show you. Two trick plays, right? We gotta have some fun when we're in here. Okay? We're gonna have a little fun. Two play, two trick plays, and we're done. I love trick plays. We go into every game with at least three, if not four. Okay? And we try to run all of them. Okay? Wrap it up. Okay. Alright, here, here we go. First of all, two point conversion. You gotta have two point conversion. Uh, plays can win, okay? This was against LSU. It's uh, 30 to 20 right before the fourth quarter. Um, we're playing some pretty good football. Quarterback gets up in there. He makes it look like he's checking. Okay, we're all making it look like we're checking the sideline like we do on a look, look. He makes a check. He says it's a, hey, you know, it's pretty much saying, okay, it's okay, it's okay. All right? We snap to the tailback, flip it. And throw it back to the quarterback. Yeah, now we're talking. We should have started with this. We could have spent all day. Tight split. Runs the corner out of there. Everyone's down. Now, this defender is unlocked. And you got to tell your receiver coming around the back side that, hey, you got to be ready for someone in your face. Okay, but you notice one thing. Because we can't have two minute motion, watch out quickly the tailback goes from an alignment. See, he's offset. The quarterback moves up. He slides over. Quarterback is actually not moving right now. So we are completely set for a full count. Quarterback goes, hey, it's okay, it's okay. He claps. Center snaps it. Flip it. There we go. All right, that's number one. That one went viral up there over in the States for a while. All right, here we go. We flopped the formation. We flopped Two tight ends. We got two tight ends and a guy that can throw it on the field. Okay? Flop two tight ends. Motion across. Okay? Notice he's gaining a little bit of depth, kind of hiding it. Flip it back. You can see what's happening. Everyone's zoning this way, the offensive line, the tailback, trying to get as many defenders over here to go to the right. We throw it backwards. We block the most dangerous man. Tailback or the receiver here is at eight yards. Got the tight end right down the sideline there. So I'll let you see the whole thing full speed. You kind of bluff, took off. Now, granted, they put it on the money. All right. A line zone drive. You got to get the ball off so the end can't, can't touch it. Around the money. All right, last one. Actually, one more, right? There's always one more. You guys will like this. Third and goal from the two. Now, third and goal or fourth and goal?
to go. We got to score, no matter what. That's what it is. Okay, so we, we put our tight end at tackle. He's right there. Okay, I'll show you the end zone shot. Okay, there's our guard. There's our guard, tackle. Now that's our tight end. Okay? When we broke the huddle for this play, he's covering up his numbers. All right? He puts his hand down. Okay? Puts his hand down. Now the, the tackle is outside of our tight end and shifts all the way out. Okay, so if you look, he's on the line of scrimmage. Okay? So we're set, we move the tackle, who was lined up at tight end, and he's on the ball. Now, they're kind of, they're trying to figure, they didn't go with him, so that's fine, so I, I'm in the box, I'm going, oh no, no, they got it figured out, okay? And one guy right here is pointing, you can see, he's like identifying right now. He's like, hey, that guy's eligible. That guy's eligible. So we got another tight end and receiver stacked tight. Okay? They're both, all three of these guys are eligible. Okay? So now we, we motion. We're going to slide protect to the left so we can cover anything off this edge. Tailback's going to the right. Quarterback's going to slightly roll. Okay? And this receiver's going to run across like he's looking for the ball. And he's going to pick. Yes, I said pick. He's going to pick. And most people don't like the word pick, right? He's going to pick that linebacker, and then we're going to release the tight end out in the flat. So it's a good one for us right there. We can run about once a year. So no one posts this on the internet, so I can be able to run it next year. But, <laughs> but uh, anyway, you can see it right here. Tight end. Okay? This guy's identifying it. We'll watch him get picked now. Or he pressured, boom, they picked him, and we threw it out the backside. So... It's always fun to have that stuff in. The thing I found is the guys almost expect to have those trick plays in each and every week, and they love running them. We put them in in the spring. We practice them throughout the fall. We got about 15 to 18 that we pick before the season that are ready to go, and let's uh, let's go have some fun with it. So, guys, I really appreciate you. It's been a lot of fun, and I want to wish you the best of luck uh, this season. So, thank you.